The Second World War started on September the 1st, 1939, with Hitler's attack on Poland, here with Swiss crosses on the German tanks. Thus, in fact, Hitler declaring war on England and France, because he knew perfectly well that Poland had a defensive treaty with France and England. So, on September 3, 1939, England and France officially had to acknowledge Hitler's declaration of war. But then, a very strange thing happened. All warring parties waited for almost a whole year, until May 10th of the next year, 1940. This eight-month period of the Second World War is called the Phony War, or in French, La Drôle de Guerre. Now, why is this? This is very important to understand who really is behind the Second World War. Well, I'll tell you why. The pharaohs of the aristocracy and the Swiss Templars waited almost a year to eliminate Britain's Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain a man of peace who followed the appeasement politics. Well, you can see Mr. Hitler smiling and acting here. And they finally did get rid of him by poisoning him, so they could put their aristocratic warmonger in place to have this pharaonic war go on. So, on May 10th, 1940, the very sick and dying Neville Chamberlain had to resign and the world war could start. Only a few hours after he resigned and the pharaonic aristocratic Mr. Churchill was set in place. And the uh, democratically elected Prime Minister of Britain Neville Chamberlain and Man of Peace died before the year was over, just a few months later of cancer and having had a few drinks too much with the wrong people. So on the very day of the second and real beginning of the Second World War, Winston Churchill was not elected democratically, but was assigned by King George VI as their aristocratic leader for the pharaohs. Churchill was born at Blenheim Palace, where his father was the Duke of Marlborough. Well, here we can see the obelisk of Blenheim Palace. Any more questions? The obelisk is the symbol of the pharaonic domination. And here's Blenheim Palace, where Mr. Churchill was born. A man of the people? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no way. Well, and here's Le Salon in Blenheim Palace, where Mr. Churchill is from. Yeah, okay. And young Winston loved concentration camps where he had 28,000 Boer women and mostly children murdered in South Africa during the Boer Wars. And you can see the young Lizzie van Zeil, the young uh, Boer child. She died, she got murdered together with 28,000 other ones. So this is how the Brits, they won the, uh, the war against the Boers. Well, of course, it's all pharaonic. It's the aristocracy. They always did this and they always will. In the Second World War, in South Africa, um, now they're doing it in uh, Iraq and all over. It's the aristocracy and they're pharaonic. And because of Mr. Churchill's old love for concentration camps, he never had the railroads to Auschwitz bombed. Because the worldwide aristocracy of the pharaohs and the Nazi Templars from Switzerland had decided that the Jews had to go due to their part in the Russian Revolution, communism and the elimination of the Tsar family, who were descended of equally pharaonic bloodlines as the rest of the gang. So, in every one of the countries, Britain, Germany and the US, this pharaonic aristocracy and the Freemasons were ruling and the war against the Russian people and against the Jews could begin in order to revenge the Russian Revolution and the killing of the Tsars, 
where the word sa is of the pharaonic word for a king, as in a sarcophagus, which is a box to put the king in when he's dead. See the pharaoh show. This is why Rudolf Hess flew to the Duke of Hamilton aristocracy to stop the war. Now why would someone from a NSDAP workers party ask the aristocracy for help? Huh? Well, and look what the Duke did. Well, he just betrayed him. The Duke didn't want any peace. Right? The Duke was just smiling and pretending to be nice to Mr. Rudolf Hess. But when it really came to it, he just betrayed him and he showed who he really was, a pharaoh. This is why Hitler had the English army escape to, in Dunkirk and why the Luftwaffe never bombed Buckingham Palace or any other aristocratic aim. This near miss here is just a deliberate false flag publicity hit so they could celebrate themselves as heroes standing side by side with the British people. Yeah, well it prob probably exploded in the night when everybody was hiding, didn't it, eh? And also the SS Prince of Darkness of the Bilderberg nobility, Mr. Bernard, was hiding in England. Here we can see him together with some of his SS friends on the other side. Oh yeah, Mr. Bernhard. The connection with the SS and the, and the Royals. I regret very much having told all this to Diana Spencer because she entrusted all this to the wrong people as well. As she was always looking for the best in people. And here she is walking around with the Octogon. So, she knew about Octagon, I can tell you that. I know they'll do me too eventually. Thank you YouTube and thank you US First Amendment. Because here in Switzerland in this Nazi dictatorship the First Amendment is one of the things they hate most. I can tell you that.